Warning, what you are about to watch is a cheap ripoff of The Flog. Nothing is original these days, so deal with it. If you don't know what The Flog is, then this is a completely original idea. It's time to start the O-Log with Jim Graham. Enjoy! O-Log. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of the O-Log right here on the Outhousers YouTube channel. Once again, I am Outhouse writer Jim Graham. Follow me on Twitter, at Jim Graham. And I know what some of you are thinking. Wasn't this supposed to be a weekly special, Jim? Well, I got busy. I got stuff to do. Believe it or not, I do other stuff than making stupid videos for the internet. Okay, maybe they're not that stupid. But anyway, let's go through the Fantastic Five. And of course, the Fantastic Five are my top five articles as written on the Outhousers.com. And let's start first with number five. At number five, written by our very own Thanos Copter, DC is set to produce a Justice League Canada, which will be written by Jeff Lemire, who is currently writing the Green Arrow series. They already have a Justice League. I believe they have a Justice League Dark. They have a Justice League of America. There's like a Justice League Beyond. Now Justice League Canada. I don't know. Didn't Marvel already try this with the regional Avengers? Didn't that really not work out well? I don't know what DC's thinking. There really aren't that many Canadian superheroes. No offense to Canada. I love Canada. I go there all the time. But, come on. It's a little overkill. At number four is a IDW story about the new Transformers Dark Cybertron 12-part miniseries. This was a press release that was also commented on by our very own Jew Terror. And this goes into the fact that one of the interns, a former Marvel intern, took the title Dark a little too literally and draw all the pages, or colored all the pages rather, all black, thus the theme Dark. Alright, that's our joke right there. Maybe it's not that great of a joke, but still, somewhat funny. Anyways, Dark Cybertron coming out, IDW, big crossover event. I think this is a pretty cool series. I've been watching a lot more Transformers lately, the Transformer Prime cartoon, so I've been getting a lot more back into Transformers, so I may, I may actually go up and pick up Dark Cybertron. I think this is pretty cool, regardless if it's all black. I mean, the all black album worked pretty good for Spinal Tap, didn't it? In at story number three, written by our very own Thanos Copter, Venom will be canceled after issue 42, which will come later this fall. I haven't read any of the books, but from what I've heard, it's been a very good series. One of the more underrated titles that Marvel has going right now. Started out with Rick Remender, has then been written by Bun. Some people maybe not like his second half run as opposed to Remender's, but either way, it's been a pretty solid series with Venom kind of being heroed up, so to speak. And there is rumor has it that it will be relaunched as part of the next phase, as part of the next phase of Marvel now. I think that's a pretty good idea. I think a lot of people did like this book, and I think it would be a great title to have relaunched as part of Marvel Now. Story number two, as written on by our very own El Presidente. A rumor is going around the interwebs that Bradley Cooper will voice Rocket Raccoon in the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy movie next year. Now, from what I have seen on various cartoons and, what, and from what I've read in various comic books, Rocket Raccoon, despite being an alien from outer space on a planet where his species looks exactly like raccoons on Earth, he's always had to seem somewhat of an English accent. And no offense to Bradley Cooper, but last time I checked, he is American. That's not to say he can't pull off a British accent, or maybe they're just going to make him American and just have Bradley Cooper do his normal voice. I don't know. Not to say Bradley Cooper can't pull it off, but I was excited when I first heard that David Tennant, the former Doctor Who, would possibly be voicing Rocket Raccoon. And I think that would be very cool. He's already kind of got the sci-fi ties with being the Doctor, so if David Tennant still has a chance of being Rocket Raccoon, I think that would be awesome. But... Again, I don't know. We'll see. It's hard for me to judge someone's going to be completely bad at something if they haven't done it. So we'll find out if Bradley Cooper is, in fact, going to be Rocket Raccoon. If he is, we'll judge it when it comes out. 
And last but not least, the number one story here for my Fantastic Five is, of course, Ben Affleck being named as the next Batman for the epic Batman and Superman movie. Now, Ben Affleck, despite movies that some people didn't like, like Daredevil mainly, and then you throw in Geely and some other titles and the whole thing with Jennifer Lopez, Ben Affleck kind of had a bad rap there for a while, but he's made some really good movies with The Town and Argo, and I think he's got his reputation back, and I don't know. We'll see if he can play a good Batman. I didn't think he was that bad as Daredevil. I think maybe you could argue that movie was kind of bad, more so than him playing Daredevil, but I think he can pull off Batman. I don't see why not. I mean, he's kind of had somewhat of an action background. I think he can handle the action scenes. He's already a millionaire in real life, so it shouldn't be that hard for him to play a millionaire or billionaire in a movie. So we'll see how it goes, and also just interesting as a fact like how they're going to set up the team up with Superman. I think it's going to be an interesting movie all around. Before I end the vlog, I got to give out my comic of worthiness for this past week in comics. And it is, of course, going to be from Marvel, Superior Spider-Man number 16. Here it is in Superior Spider-Man number 16, as you can kind of see here on the cover. The Hobgoblin is no more, as Ben Ulrich is snuffed out by Spider-Man, and he goes on all the TV channels all across New York, including all the big screens there in Times Square, to alert the citizens of New York City that Ben Ulrich is, in fact, the Hobgoblin. But before the Hobgoblin is set off to jail by Spider-Man fighting him, he escapes, thanks to the army of goblins. And we still quite don't know what's going on with those ar army of goblins, down below in the sewers of New York City. We don't know if Norman Osborn is a part of them or some kind of radical offshoot from Norman Osborn as his days as the Green Goblin, but something's going on, and it's building, I think, towards a really big arc, and we're just kind of getting little snippets here and there, but Spider-Man with this whole army of Spider-Men now, and it's pretty crazy, but this was a great episode, and uh, I really like this series so far, written by Dan Slott, and definitely worth picking up this week. Well, that's another edition of the Olog right here on the Outhousers YouTube channel. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Jim Graham. Follow the Outhousers on Twitter at the Outhousers. And of course, for your latest dose of comic book news and related pop culture with a little satire, go visit theouthousers.com. See ya! Double guns.